Hey, welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to go over how to copy. More specifically, we're going to go over port mirroring. What is it? What does it let us do? And as always, how do we actually set this thing up? So let's jump right into it because we've got a lot to cover in this lesson. All right, so what is port mirroring? Well, port mirroring ultimately allows us to take packets coming in and out of our VM network adapters, also known as VNIX, and send copies of those packets to somewhere else. Now, this could be really, really helpful, especially in terms of troubleshooting. So, for example, do we even have packets leaving the VM? Or what kind of HTTP request is that VM making? Or is it making one at all? Those types of things. So we can see kind of under the hood what is happening from a network standpoint. This is really important because traditional networks allow you to do this. You can set up things called span ports, for example, on Cisco switches, and you can say anything coming in and out of that port, I wanna copy it and I wanna send a, a copy over to my monitoring station. That's super helpful in terms of troubleshooting. But a lot of people think once you get into your vCenter and vSphere environment, you're just kind of, your hands are tied and you have no way to actually view any of this, or maybe your hands aren't tied. Maybe some, something's covering your eyes. Either way, the point is, this is there to solve that and to address that. So you can see the packets coming in and out of your VMs. Another thing this can be useful for is security monitoring. Maybe you're using a SIM, so you're trying to monitor traffic, uh, maybe using something like Splunk, so you wanna send packets somewhere else, or maybe you have a dedicated security appliance that you wanna process packets and look for suspicious you know, activity on your network, that sort of thing. That's a huge use case for this. Another one is just learning. You would be shocked at the amount of learning that you can do just by looking at packets coming in and out of a VM. And I'm not even talking about vCenter or ESX or anything like that. I'm just talking about learning about, I don't know, how DNS works. It's one thing to say, oh, I know how DNS works. It gets, you know, it resolves from this server, but it's really cool when you can actually capture the DNS packets and understand what's going on. And that's just one example. The point is, it can be really helpful if you really wanna understand what's going on under the hood Capturing some packets is always helpful. Now, as far as how you actually analyze them, so if you're playing around with this in your lab, what I always do in my labs is I just run Wireshark to capture the packets on my laptop, and I'll just make my laptop the destination for these packet capture sessions. That's probably the easiest way if you're doing this in a lab. All right. Now, once we get into the GUI and actually start setting up these sessions, and I'll just show you at a very high level how to do those, there are a few different types of packet mirroring or port mirroring sessions that you can set up in vCenter. And I do also wanna mention that port mirroring is a feature of the distributed switch and is not available on the standard switch. It's one of the many reasons I recommend going to the distributed switch if you're not already there. All right, the first type of port mirroring session is called distributed port mirroring. This is basically, we're taking packets from one VM and we're sending them to another VM on the same host. So that's one way. Another type of session is a remote mirroring source. This is where we're mirroring one of our distributed ports to uplinks of the vSphere host. So we're taking traffic coming out of our VM and sending it onto the physical network through one of our physical uplinks. The next type is remote mirroring destination, which is where we're actually kind of doing the reverse of that last one. We're saying, I wanna take packets from VLAN 52, and then I wanna mirror those to one of my distributed ports, which in this case would be one of my virtual machines. So maybe my virtual machine is the monitoring station, and I wanna capture traffic coming you know, on the network to, like I said, VLAN 52 or 27 or whatever, and send it to that VM. That would be remote mirroring destination. The next option is called Encapsulated Remote Mirroring Source L3. Whew, that was a mouthful. This one is specifically the one that I use in my lab when demonstrating and being able to send traffic to my laptop. What this ultimately does is mirrors traffic from one of your distributed ports, again, your virtual machines, and sends it to a layer three destination using an encapsulation essentially. So it's using, ultimately, it's basically GRE tunneling. So it's taking that original packet, encapsulating it, sending it on the network destined with a destination IP of your monitoring station. 
So when your monitoring station gets that packet, it'll actually have an extra header for that encapsulation on it. So you almost have to learn to ignore that when you're using this type. But the benefit to this type is that you can send those copies of those packets anywhere in your network you want, as long as you have IP reachability. So if you have a you know, physical server way over there or at another data center or something, and you wanna send packets over there onto some other network, you would be using this option as your means to accomplish that. And if you are monitoring within your vSphere environment, you have a VM to do the monitoring, you're probably going to use one of the other options that I mentioned already. All right, so let's look at just kind of an example here of what port mirroring looks like in practice. So in this case, we have a top of rack switch. We have a host, we'll call this London Compute 1. And we have a virtual distributed switch here. And the distributed switch has a couple of uplinks. We have VMNIC 0 and 1. And in this case, we have a port group we're calling web. On that port group or connected to that port group, we have two VMs. We have web 01A and web 02A. Now, in, we also have a monitoring station here. Again, this could be you know, your laptop. This could be, maybe it's another host that has a VM on it that's running Wireshark. Doesn't really matter. The point is this is some destination where all we really need is an IP. We need to know the IP of that monitoring station to be able to send traffic over there. Or perhaps we have another VM on the same host and we could use one of those uh, you know, other methods where we can just port mirror from VM to VM. That would, that's probably the easiest way to do it. But this is, I'm showing you essentially the most complicated because this is quite honestly what you'll probably run into more often than not. All right, so now let's say we wanted to take packets coming in or out of these VMs we could set up a port mirroring session and we would select those VNICs, we can do it per VNIC. We select those as part of the session and then we set up our destination. What happens then is we set up the destination to be this monitoring station and that's all that really happens. As packets traverse through our port group, we're going to send copies of those packets over to this monitoring station and that's really it. Now that said, in the next lesson, we'll get into actually how to configure a basic port mirroring session. So I'll see you there, stay tuned.